My name is David Vasquez, and I'm the head of the English department at UO. It is my distinct pleasure to welcome you to our 2020 virtual commencement ceremony. Welcome to all graduating seniors and graduate students, and a hearty welcome to all friends, families, and to others who are sharing this special occasion. Before we begin our ceremony, I would like to humbly acknowledge that we are gathered on what was, is, and always will be Kalapuya Elihi, the homelands of the first peoples of the Willamette Valley and the descendants of the Confederated Tribes of Grand Ronde and the Confederated Tribes of Siletz. It is our pleasure to share this commencement ceremony with you. Although we wish that we could be together to celebrate, we want to acknowledge your accomplishments and to share our happiness at being a part of your journey. What you've done is amazing. To get things started, I would like to introduce my colleague, Mary Wood, our Director of Graduate Studies. Mary will acknowledge our newly minted PhD and MA. Hi, everybody. I'm very happy to present the graduates who have earned either a master's degree or a doctor of philosophy degree in English. Students earning a master's degree in English work hard in an intensive program or for two years they take the same seminars as PhD students. For each of these courses, they are expected to write an excellent seminar paper. They demonstrate ability in a foreign language. They take pedagogy courses and then teach their own composition courses. Some choose to write an MA thesis, a demanding original project that the student then sends out for publication in an academic journal. Some of these graduates go on to PhD programs while others enter a range of careers, becoming community college teachers, instructional designers, leaders in educational nonprofits, or study abroad experts, just to name a few. Those of you who have earned the MA in English have attained an impressive milestone. Even more impressive is the fact that all of you completed your MA during the pandemic, pushing through despite the challenges and uncertainties to write a thesis, to finish that last seminar paper, and to fulfill your responsibilities to your own students. And now I turn to our PhD graduates. Some of you who are friends and family might wonder, as my family did, what exactly happens in an English PhD program anyway, and why it takes five or six years to complete. Well, I can give you some idea while you look at the titles of dissertations written by the PhD graduates. PhD students in the English department complete three years of seminars in a dazzling range of courses, from medieval romance to black writers in the US, from comic studies to queer theory, from indigenous literatures to transatlantic modernism, from digital humanities to environmental studies, to name just a few. PhD students must learn foreign languages to at least a level of reading mastery. They must take two sets of grueling oral and written exams, reading hundreds of works of literature, criticism, and theory. Finally, they propose, write, and defend a dissertation an original, thoroughly researched book length work that establishes them as experts in their chosen field. Along the way, they learn to grapple with complex theories and texts and then communicate beautifully their ideas and interpretations. English PhD students also study pedagogy and then teach their own classes, primarily in composition, but also in literature, humanities, ethnic studies, women's gender and sexuality studies, and cinema and television studies. With their powerful combination of scholarly abilities, writing and rhetorical skills, and teaching experience and knowledge, these English PhD graduates can seek jobs as professors. They can become public humanities educators, archival consultants, instructional designers, or public scholars, just to name a few possibilities. So congratulations, you did it. Earning a PhD in English is a breathtaking achievement that takes strength, detective-like insight, and perseverance. Finishing and defending a dissertation is always a daunting challenge and one that all of you have now achieved. All of you finished your dissertations and you defended them before committees of established scholars in your field, and you did an excellent job. Those of you who defended your dissertations this spring did so as the ground shook and shifted beneath you as each day brought alarming news and a cascade of growing uncertainties. 
as teachers with little forewarning. You created video lectures, managed Zoom and chat discussions, graded online writing assignments, and responded to your students with compassion and concern. Living through this pandemic has turned a spotlight on what really matters, on what makes life meaningful. And the question of what matters has always been the domain of arts, humanities, and literature. So you now stand where that spotlight shines. The world needs now more than ever what you have to offer, your creative, flexible, often brilliant approaches to problem solving, your deep knowledge of history, literature, and culture, your passionate commitment to informed and responsible debate and discussion. Congratulations. And now I'm happy to introduce Corbett Upton, Associate Director of Undergraduate Studies, who will announce undergraduate awards and honors. Greetings, class of 2020. It is my great pleasure to be here with you today to recognize and celebrate your achievements and to thank you for well representing the discipline of English. Today, we recognize our class of 2020 honor students. Students in the Robert D. Clark Honors College, Hillary Elman, Jordan Harden, Anselm Lefebvre, Annalie Nock, Annika Nykannon, Rachel Perry. Students in the English Honors Program, Olivia Atmore, Kadaja Chapman Ball, Jordan Harden, Trevor Now, Aaron Sandvold, Scott Ziegler. Members of the Alpha Tau Phi Chapter of Sigma Tau Delta International English Honor Society, Kadaja Chapman Ball, Martha DaCosta, Brad Doricott, Anselm Lefebvre, Chloe Munoz, Annika Nykannon, Aaron Sandvold, Sierra Swanson. Each year, the very best Oregon graduates are elected to Phi Beta Kappa, the national academic honor society that has become synonymous with intellectual excellence for over two centuries. We want to pay special tribute to our English majors who have been elected to this prestigious organization. Hilary Elman, Joseph Hutchins, Maxfield Lydum, Annalie Nock, Annika Nykannon, Sierra Swanson, Scott Ziegler. Each spring, the English department recognizes a valedictorian. The valedictorian honor goes to the graduating senior with the highest cumulative overall GPA combined with the highest cumulative major GPA. This award represents the hard work and ded dedication of an English undergraduate scholar over the course of the Bachelor of Arts degree. The UO English valedictorian for 2020 is Annika Nykannon. Annika will now address the class of 2020. Good afternoon, English graduates. Thank you so much to the department for the honor of speaking today. We all know how difficult it is to focus on Zoom, so I will try to get straight to the point. But I do want to especially thank Professor Upton, Professor Cortez, Professor Miller, Professor Whalen, and Professor McGuffey, as well as the staff and custodians at the Knight Library and PLC. I also want to thank my wonderful and supportive parents. A valedictorian speech is supposed to be uplifting and inspirational. But as seniors graduating during the COVID-19 pandemic, we may be a little short on inspiration at the moment. Many of us have lost jobs. Some of us have even lost family members. Whether you are stuck at home or are self-isolating completely alone, these past few months have been some of the most difficult in our lives. And a BA in English may seem like a particularly unhelpful degree when facing, at best, the worst job market since the Great Depression. Like many of you, these stressors have shrunk my already 
pretty limited ability to focus. I've ended up replacing some of the literary fiction I usually read before bed with Harry Potter. Reading fiction catered to an eighth grade attention span is just about all I can manage right now. And I have to say that the series strikes me differently after coming through this department. It's still a page turner, but I'm consistently discomforted by the fat phobia, the limiting gender roles, and the overwhelming whiteness. We are told that reading exercises empathy, but the narratives we consume also teach us to limit such empathy. Stories teach us who is allowed to take up the space of protagonist, who gets to hold a sword or a wand, and what color and shape heroism should take. They can teach us to comply with systems of oppression. One of the lessons of this major is that theoretical lenses enable us to read against the grain of stories that peddle limiting ideologies. They allow us to perceive an increased range of experience in text or on screen, and they lend depth to our understanding of others. We do not have to credulously ingest J.K. Rowling's equation of fatness to badness, which may be seen in a host of negative portrayals of characters like the Dursleys. Critical reading practices allow us to resist the divisive and limited characterizations. They force us to sit with contradictions. Rereading Harry Potter, these practices allowed me to see that for all the Dursleys' faults, they are actually modeling body positive parenting. For many, COVID-19 is the distinctly untheoretical lens that has enabled us to read against the grain of rabid individualism in American culture. We have been shown that our health is only as secure as that of frontline workers and the most vulnerable in our communities. The logic of the rat race is falling apart, if it was ever logical at all. However, many elected officials are using greater good language to justify reopening the economy without systemically applied health precautions. They are ignoring the implications of going back to business as usual during a pandemic that has disproportionately killed Black, Brown, and Indigenous peoples. We must learn to read past this false language of unity to create community solidarity that isn't built, as this country is built, on the sacrifice of marginalized bodies. To do this, we will need storytellers, teachers, and communicators. We will need community members who continue to read against the grain of exclusionary cultural and political practices. In other words, we will need English majors. This department has granted us the tools to lead the way to a more just and healthy world. The story of this crisis and of the next few years is one we will all have to tell together. So let's make sure that everyone's voice is heard. Congrats to the class of 2020. Hello, 2020 graduates. Uh, this is Professor Gordon Sayre, Director of Undergraduate Studies for the English Department. It's been my pleasure to work with many of you over the past three or four years on your distribution requirements for the English major, the second language requirement, all the other issues that you may come up across when you're trying to complete the degree here. It's not easy, and I'm so proud for you and your families that you've made it to this day. All the best to you in the future. Greetings, my name is Martha Bayless. I'm the director of the Folklore and Public Culture Program, and I'm here to present the graduate degrees to our MA students. The Folklore Program is one of a few major centers of folklore research in the United States, studying expressive forms such as mythology, legend, folk tales, art, music, dance, food traditions, religion, ritual, and ceremony. If you're watching this because you know a folklore graduate, they're the one to ask about all those things you always wondered about like how dancing builds community, or why you should not trust that story about a friend of a friend who woke up in a bathtub full of ice and his kidney was gone, or why we wear flat boards on our heads at graduation. Our graduates have experience in fieldwork and firsthand research, as well as theory and analysis. They take two years of advanced coursework. They usually work in the folklore archives and often do an internship with a public organization. 
And finally, they write a substantial thesis or compile a final project. And this year, they do it all in the middle of an international pandemic. And you can bet they're also collecting material about the pandemic along the way. Although this is a graduation, I'm not wearing a flat board on my head at this moment, but I am giving you a nice long speech, which is also a traditional ritual. So I'll stop now and wish a hearty congratulations to our graduates. Well done. Congratulations, class of 2020. Hi, everyone. Congratulations. Best of luck out there. What graduates, congratulations. Congratulations, everybody. Congratulations, class of 2020. You did it. Congratulations, you did it. Hey, everybody. Congratulations. Hey, congratulations, everybody. Congratulations, graduates. Congratulations, everyone. Congratulations, English 2020. Congratulations, class of 2020. Y'all are awesome. Congratulations, class of 2020. Congratulations. Well done, you. Wow. Congratulations. You rock. Woo! Yay, you did it. Congrats. Congratulations, English and Folklore majors, 2020. Congratulations, class of 2020. Congratulations on your unprecedented accomplishment. Go Ducks. Congratulations, class of 2020. Well done. Congratulations, class of 2020. Slauncha. Congratulations, class of 2020. Keep reading. Mabub Ahmad. Justin Brock Will Connibal Bob Craven Michael Duncan Elliot Elliot Vanessa Farfan Kayla Fenton Gina Philo Cassie Galentine Elio Garcia Alex Garner Claire Grayman Molly Hatai Ferens Teresa Hernandez Reed Catherine Huber Abby Johnson Jun Ha Jung Paul Cratwell Tierney Jun Manuel Stephanie Mastro Stefano Taylor McDougall Alex Newsom Ross Odell Carmel Oman Aiden Pang Sarah Preston Celeste Reeb 
Megan Reynolds. Chris Rothley. Debargia Sanyal. Leslie Seltzer. Alexander Steele. Jaisha Stevens. Xander Tan. Rachel Tanner. John Fernelius. Erica Heim. Aliyah Kempton. Prince FM Lamba. I'd like to thank my family and my friends for being so supportive during my studies. Above all, I want to thank God for guiding me and for protecting me. It has been great. And I just want to appreciate everyone. Hannah Naylor. Maddie Fluger. Sabrina Sherman. Parker Smith. Crystal Snyder. Iris T. Ewan. Adam Vernon. Hannah Zeller. Emma Allen. Joseph Anthony. Olivia Atmore. Sam Baker. Zoe Basket. Jason Bebo. Nathaniel Bilton. Liam Bowman. Azaria Carew. Kadeja Chapman Ball. Ashley Clark. Ryan Cooper. Anna Devias. Thank you to my friends, family, professors, and Elizabeth Wheeler for everything you guys have done for me. Congratulations, you guys. Go Ducks. Sam Davis. Martha DaCosta. Derek Dew. Benjamin Dillon. Brad Doricott. Mark Drevdahl. Garrett Drum. Jared Duro. Jules Isengard. Hilary Elman. Stuart Elmer. Tucker Engel. Richie Garceau. Wesley Grace. 
Agena Hale. Jordan Harden. Jermaine Harris. Kayla Henderson Wood. Augustine Hernandez. Tim Hubara Vacek. Keegan the Third. Michaela Johnson. Maya Kirtis. Sarah Kefauver. Lorelai Kelsey. Danny Kinnar. Sean Kaderna. Holden Latif. Anselm Lafave. Brady Lim. Max Lightham. Maddie Lynch. Kaylor McLaughlin. Theo McGrath. Will McMahon. Ian Miller. Katie Miller. Caitlin Mintz. Serena Morgan. Patty Sue Mulder. Chloe Munoz. Trevor Now. Twyla Nywert. Jacqueline Nguyen. Tanner Nielsen. Anika Nikonen. Ethan Oliver. Rachel Perry. Evan Pickering. Jordan Pickrell. Jeff Chen. Jessica Ray. Willis Rising. Josh Ripley. Sydney Roach. Madeleine Roel. Aaron Sandvold. Ellen Scharf. Benjamin Scheel. Haley Schleuder. Arima Sierra Cortez. Kelsey Simpson. Taylor Steinberg. Karen Sumner. 
Sierra Swanson. Courtney Thomas. Matilda Thomas. Lauren Trapp. Tyler Ware. Haley Watt. Aiden Webb. Gabrielle Will. Kimberly Williams. Anya Wonderly.